Hello, hello. Hey, Vicki. Ready to talk about some fair value today? Oh, I can't wait to talk about fair value. It's my favorite subject. Shall right. we just dive right in? Yeah, three minutes. You got it. All right, let's do it. Okay, fair value. It's a great topic to do, but not in three minutes. And here is why. Fair value is everywhere. So if you prepare financial statements under US GAAP, you're gonna see it. Whether it's investments that you hold, derivatives accounted for under ASC 815, or if you're testing pretty much anything for impairment, whether it's PP&E, goodwill, intangible assets, you're going to have to measure it at fair value under ASC 820. So what is fair value? Well, fair value is the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. It's a lot of words, but there's a couple of key things in there. First is the price. So you're gonna need to know uh, what that principal market is where uh, a market participant would normally transact. And keep in mind that it's an exit price. So it's what a market participant would pay not necessarily what I'm hoping to get for that asset. Other things to keep in mind, it's an orderly transaction. So there's enough time to market and sell that asset. You've got enough buyers that are interested, all of those sorts of things. Um, one of the most important pieces is that it's market participant assumptions. Entity specific assumptions are irrelevant when we're talking about fair value. We really care what market participants would think about. Um, so those are some key pieces of that definition that you're gonna wanna keep in mind. Now, ASC 820 gives us three different measurement approaches that we can use to estimate fair value. So first is market, a market approach, and that's great if you've got something like an equity security that's already publicly traded. Another option is an income approach. So this deals with uh, projecting out cash flows and discounting them back to arrive at an estimate for fair value. Again, always keeping in mind market participant assumptions, not entity assumptions. And then you've got a cost approach. You won't see it as much, but maybe for something like PP&E where you're really looking to replace the asset at that current service capacity, you might use that. Three different approaches to determine fair value. Another key piece of ASC 820 is the disclosure piece. And so if you've ever heard anything about fair value, it's probably the hierarchy table in the footnotes. So we've got three levels in that hierarchy. You've got level one, and that's any time you're dealing with observable market prices, uh, and you're just using that P times Q approach. Level two is when you have observable inputs, but you're making some adjustments. So think about using matrix pricing to fair value your bond portfolio. That's likely gonna be a level two. And then finally, you have level three in your fair value hierarchy, and that's anything that uses unobservable inputs. A lot of things we just covered there with fair value in a very short amount of time, so definitely recommend that you check out all of the great training that we have on our Gap Dynamics Learning Library or stay tuned for more content. Thanks. You hear me? Is the mic on? Yep. Okay, yeah, I went in the bathroom and I was like, hmm, I bet this mic is hot.